Jesus says, if you believe in me, the works that I do, you will do also. And greater works than these will you do because I go to my Father. When we realize that we simply need to take Jesus at his word. Jesus is the one sent from the Father to teach us what the Father looks like. He says, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So his mission is our commission. And that day, he said, he was sitting in the fuller yard, perusing through his Bible. And when he saw this revelation, he said, I wrote in my Bible, I must learn to do what Jesus did. We need to learn to do what Jesus did. Well, what this did was, this is basically the stuff that God taught him. And now he's getting ready to launch out into a painful learning curve. How many of you know when you get a revelation from the Lord, sometimes the one following that wonderful revelation is a painful learning curve. As you try to do what God has revealed to you to do. And that's exactly what happened. He said, he's church. He started teaching through the gospel of Luke. He said, we started praying for the sick. Problem is nobody got healed. As a matter of fact, we started getting the colds that people came forward with. We started getting their sicknesses. (laughs) He said, I was so frustrated. I said, I'm not going to pray for these sick people anymore. God said, preach my word or get out. And he said, how far out? (laughs) Out of the ministry? Out of the kingdom? And the Lord said to him, preach my word, not your non-experience. He said, well, that was a twist. He said, you know, evangelicals chide Pentecostals for preaching their experience. And now he said, God is chiding me for preaching my non-experience. See, just because we don't see anybody get healed when we pray for them, that doesn't alleviate the fact that it's still our job to heal the sick. He said, after nine months of praying for the sick and nobody getting healed. He said, I was so frustrated. He said, one morning I get this phone call from this man and that new couple in our church. And he said, my wife is sick in bed and I've got to go to work and we have kids and you need to come and heal her. (laughs) He said, I stormed out the back door. He said, I didn't exactly raise my fist to God, but he said, I did that Italian thing like I've just received a box of bad goods. It said, what? And he said, I went into the couple's house. The woman, she was really sick. He said, no, but no woman would let a man see her the way she looked unless he was really, she was really sick. So he said, I, I've said a quick prayer, turned around to tell her husband, Why not everybody gets healed? And I'd gotten really good at telling that story. And he said, the man was looking over his shoulder, smiling. And he said, what are you looking at? And he turned around and looked, and the woman was up making the bed. And and he said, what are you doing? What happened to you? (laughs) She said, well, you healed me. And they asked him to stay for breakfast. And he said, I was so dumbfounded that he said, I just turned around and staggered out of the house. And he said, about halfway across the lawn, it hit me all of a sudden. She's healed. And he said, whoo, he clicked his heels and said, we got one. He said, on the way home, he saw this vision, open vision. Now, I can't imagine God giving you a vision on the LA freeway. What are you thinking, God? He said, he said, he pulled over, smart move, pulled over to get a better look at what he was seeing. And he said, it looked like a cloud bank. And all of a sudden he realized that it was a honeycomb and raining down from this honeycomb was honey, drips of honey. 
And he said there were some people that they were getting this honey on them and they're going, they didn't like it. And he said there were other people it was raining on and they were so excited that they were taking it in and giving it away to other people. And God spoke to him and said, John, that's my mercy. Healing and salvation is poured out for everyone. That mercy of God rains down for everybody. He said, God said, there's plenty for everyone. Don't ever beg for my mercy again. He said, the problem's not up here. The problem's down there. He said that another revelation that transformed his life and he never saw healing again after that. From that moment on, he knew it was God's will to heal and God wanted people healed spirit, soul, and body. He said the key, don't you love keys? Want to know a key? He said the key was believing in God's mercy. So he went from believing that God could heal to believing that we're actually commissioned to heal the sick. Let that sink in. You know, I grew up Pentecostal all my life. I was born into Pentecostalism. I was under this impression that you can have a healing ministry if you prayed enough and fasted enough and cried enough and waited long enough and you worked hard enough and you proved yourself long enough. That maybe at some point when you got good enough, you could have a healing ministry, maybe. Anybody identify with that? You see, I realize now God has already commissioned you. You don't have to beg God for a healing ministry. It's already yours. Step out and do the stuff. The ministry of Jesus is our ministry. That's what we're supposed to go do. That's why he said faith is spelled R-I-S-K. You just have to step out. Well, John never wanted to build a healing ministry around himself. He didn't like that Pentecostal model of one man on stage, the man of faith and power for the hour. His goal from the very beginning was to build an audience, not an audience. He didn't want to build an audience. He wanted to build an army. Pastors. It's not about us being the great people of God that's going to lay hands on the sick. We don't want followers. We want disciples. We want to raise up an army, not pew potatoes. We are called in that Ephesians 4 model to train and equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Wimber's heart was to give it all away. And he realized that if we have a model, if the people have a model, that they can follow that model and they can be activated more quickly into doing the stuff that Jesus did. So he found the model in Jesus. Jesus would take his disciples along with him, demonstrate how to do the stuff, and then he, after they, they he demonstrated, they get them doing the stuff, and then after they did the stuff, then he would send them out so that they could do it on their own. And when they come back, they would report back to him what they did. Doesn't that kind of sound like the model that you're doing? That's called the clinic model that he developed. Teach, demonstrate, get people praying, coach them. It's that five-step prayer model. Charity so beautifully taught on this morning. It's called activation and impartation. 
He said, everybody gets to play. Everybody gets to do the stuff. Everybody gets to do the stuff. So through the process, God was faithful to His promise. To, I said, when He said, I've seen your ministry, now let me show you mine. So John went through some major paradigm shifts through studying the Scripture, applying it all, and putting into practice.